to developing stories around the world. They say it's a way to get their message heard. Democracy in March continues as you see the crowds turned out. So did the rain. Hong Kong police, in dealing with these protesters, have upped the armor and have brought in the riot squads. The devastation can be felt, it can be seen. Just a week ago, this was Soda Winery's tasting room. That's despite the fact that the U.S. has now confirmed its second case in Chicago with a woman. Right now, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, is inside of Buckingham Palace having lunch with the queen. But it also has Hong Kong residents nervous about traveling across the border. So as you can imagine, it's pretty loud out here. Susan Lee, who, who got here just in time. Yeah. Oh, Susan. Right, Susan Lee has the numbers sending as a hint of who may... Oh, did, oh is the hat taking it away? Did uh -oh, he take it away? Uh-oh. Is Fox Business correspondent Susan Lee, who is very smart. Who will win? Is this this? You guys should have a wimple coffee yeah. clash. <laughs> But today, shocking the market, the tech, and the media world by announcing its new streaming service, Apple TV+. Plus. Watch Susan Lee's special two-part interview. People see Tim Cook on one side, Donald Trump on the other. They see a lot of difference. But you have been able to engage and work together. So how does this, the relationship work? There are differences. There's, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but you look for intersections. Because you both are such big personalities, there's a close economic political partnership between Canada and the U.S., people are always curious as to how closely you get along. So I'll give you a scale. How about this? If the scale is, bear with me, if the Mexican President Nieto is, say, one, Macron is a 10, where are you in that sliding scale? I, I don't know. I'm, I think we're all interested in unpacking that scale she's just generated and why those choices are there. I, 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 I think uh, it's an interesting read on it. <laughs> okay, so the scale will be at seven. I... Did you reject a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau? Yeah, I did. Why? Because his tariffs are too high and he doesn't seem to want to move, and I've told him, forget Mr. about President, it. Mr. President, NAFTA. What, what does that mean for NAFTA? Will you be pulling out of NAFTA? Uh, I don't like NAFTA. So if you're gonna, are you going to notify Congress of What we're probably NAFTA. going to do is call it the USMC. Good job, too. You do, a, you do a very good job. Really good. Fortunately, the markets have dropped, would you say, 30 percent in the last four months, right? I think I watched you recently when you said that. I said, I think she's wrong. I think it's actually 32, but that's okay. But a lot. Congratulations, Susan. Thank you so much. You broke news, then. Susan Lee is here to help us out with that. She'll join us on set. Even growing up, as somebody in North America, as one that's been here since I was two years old, you know, you've been called names in the playground. And for some reason, just over the past year, you've just heard this replay of things that you thought and hope, hope for were in the past. But maybe it's because of what happened to the economy. People have lost their jobs. Obviously, COVID has been horrendous for everybody over the past 12 months. But for the entire community, we're, you know, we're standing up for ourselves finally because Asians have been called the model minority. So we've been silenced. We've been taught to not, not cause problems. But I like the fact that it's been galvanized and that we're all getting together. We're all standing as one, hoping for a voice to say, please stop. We're all in this together. We're all Americans as well. And we want to be part of this community. Asian Americans currently make up 6% of the population, but the fastest growing group across America today, also a crucial swing vote. And we have a highly esteemed panel joining us today to participate in this impactful discussion. It's important to tell positive, powerful stories from the Asian American community. So these little kids growing up that they feel empowered, they don't feel othered, and it's okay to look the way you do. And you don't feel different and you don't feel uncomfortable in your own skin. What about typecasting in Hollywood? Do you think with Crazy Rich Asians that's ended? So you can be the leading man, you don't have to know Kung Fu? I don't know if it's ended. I wouldn't say it's that clear cut yet, but I do, I do think there was an awareness. She's done more interviews than a hiring manager at Wendy's, Fox Business correspondent Susan Lee. <laughs> My grandpa used to own a convenience store. Mm -hmm. So he was running away from civil war and that was how he made his new life here in yeah. the new land. And when I was little, I didn't know it at the time, but he was actually, he was being robbed. Right. I was a little kid, I didn't know what was happening. He told me to go back into the kitchen and- I remember you know, that day. There. Breaking right now, the national emergency at our- Also breaking this evening, the top aide to Juan Guaido. We're less than an hour to go to the closing bell. 
I'm Susan Lee. Yes, it does. So a four-day winning streak in jeopardy. She's out the hallway on the phone. There she the is. The market's capping off a wild week with all three major indices closing down after hitting brand new record highs. Does this really make sense at the end of the day when, you know, you had this transformative opportunity in Long Island City in New York where you could have seen 25,000 jobs, high-paying jobs of at least on average of $150,000. And this company was willing to invest $2.5 billion in the first year just to get the infrastructure in. And that uh, investment could have extended and multiplied to tens of billions in the future. Was this a lost opportunity for New York City? It wasn't long ago that President Trump was taunting little rocket man with fire and fury. Now there may be some kind of deal. How has Trump succeeded where previous presidents have failed? You know, in China, there's a cultural thing called face and respect. And arguably right now, this U.S. president is best when it comes to optics. In China, optics is part of the culture.